diff actually broke the studs coming out of the back plate. That was stupid. So yeah, this is the second time now the diff in this car has given me some problems. The first time it actually kind of like rattled itself loose. One of the bolts came loose off the back of it and the diff actually broke the studs coming out of the back plate, fell down, hit the ground, broke the axles and everything else. So then when we redid it, we put drive shaft shop axles in it, put new studs in it, got it all working 110%. But um, same thing, I think just daily driving that clunky diff, it eventually loosened up those axle bolts and um, you know, uh, I didn't think I had to nut and bolt a street car uh, as much as a race car, but apparently we do. So, uh, but what we're gonna try and do now is stick a R230 diff into it. So it's a little bit bigger. It's got lower gearing, which will help the daily driving. Um, better for the turbo. Safety. Feel good. And it's also, it's a viscous style LSD. So it'll just make the drive way smoother, way nicer. It'll you know, take turns without clunking and popping and twisting and pulling. So it's what this car wants. It definitely does. When you go around corners, it's like, I yeah, got, I got, I got, I got. It's and like, like you hear it in the thing. RPM too. It's like following the car. It's like, roar, 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 yeah. roar, roar. Like, even if you can't hear the, the dip itself, it sounds like I don't know how to drive stick. And so. what, um, what dip you put in it? R230? Yeah, so the dip what that dip came that? out of that car. Um, it's so the twin turbo car. It's a 370Z dip. Yeah, which is actually, I want to say Corey Hosford's dip. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I put that thing in there at grid life when I, that dip broke because I had a 408 put in that car and the guy that put it in there, I don't think it had the backlash all set right. It started clunking, making a lot of noise and I smoked the ring gear on that thing. The only time I've ever broken a ring gear in an R230 drifting. Wow. Except for the time we hit the forklift, but that doesn't count. That does not count. That was a crash. <laughs> Chris ran his really. car into a forklift one time. Not really, it was just the forklift. Yeah, like the, for the forklift, yeah. I'm like, where's the forklift? Yeah, it's outside. But yeah, when we're doing the proximity shoot, I uh, went drifting by a forklift and the forks was sitting on the ground and just kicked the tips up just enough where it caught the rim and basically tore this whole thing open. Not on this car, the other car. Tore this all open, tore the tire off, uh, broke the axle, broke the diff. So You gotta find that wheel. I have it at yeah. my house. Oh, yeah. yeah, I gotta bring it here and put it on display. Dude, bring that thing It's here. a nice piece. We'll put it right up there. <laughs> so yeah, this uh, that's the first time we ever broke one uh, actually drifting. And then so, uh, since I was already on my spare because of the proximity situation, um, I saw Corey Hosford post up on his way to grid life like, I brought like three extra diffs. Does anyone think that's enough? <laughs> like, I don't know why he was so worried about breaking it. And so, as soon as mine went, I immediately like ran over to his pit. I'm like, hey bud, um, I saw on your Instagram that you brought way too many discs with you. Let me help you out. Yeah. And um, so I threw a diff in the twin turbo car and it's been in there for over a year. The only reason why it came out is because it got a quick change. So now I'm gonna try and put that diff in this thing. See if I can get this in here. <laughs> Since this has the Techno Toy Tuning diff conversion set up, I should be able to modify the front mount and be able to put whatever diff I want in that thing. We're gonna find out. So, cool part about this car, like I said, it's got the whole Technotoy tuning rear end. So we got like the tubular adjustable arms, we've got the drive shaft shop axles, the Technotoy spindles, coilovers, whole nine yards. Disc brake conversion. And it also has this custom front differential mount. And so, like I was saying, this is all adjustable. So I'm pretty sure I can get that to pick up on the R230. Looks like there's plenty of room above it for it. And then that bolt is gonna be in the same location as the R230. So this is where the last time my diff uh, broke, that bolt came loose and the whole thing just snapped the rear studs and came down and twisted this front mount and broke the axles, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, these were all backing out. I'm not trying to chase this thing like race cars. We're gonna just go ahead and swap this thing out. All right, so I found the diff I wanna run. This is a, a nice viscous style. This one is set up as a locker. So I'm going to clean this one up a little bit. I knock these bushings out. Somebody else said, put this diff together for me, put the wrong bushings in this. They put both sets of thick ones in there. So I gotta knock them out and put the thin ones on the correct side. So I can get those back to assemble that diff. But the other cool thing is, I got an extra one of these Z1 billet rear covers. 
um, and it's extra capacity, it's extra fins, uh, extra cooling, looks really slick, so we're gonna put that on there too, just to really clean it up, so. Uh, next thing we get to do is beat the crap out of this diff. Not to be confused with this diff. And yup, thin boy on the bottom, thick boy on the top. So, oh yeah, Z diffs everywhere, apparently. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey! Oh, well, that works, I'll take it. That's a win right there. Fire! fire. Wow, that no one's pissed. That thing is really in there. It's interesting how some fall out and some don't. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like those guys in the kilns. Are, are, are <laughs> no, the, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we gotta take those bushings out. Cool. Boing. Bye bye. Little pro tip when you got some aluminum bushings and trying to get them into some sort of steel housing or anything, really, chuck them in the freezer for a little bit. Let those cool down, shrink up, and they'll knock in a little bit easier. Now, we got a little crispy boys, nice and chilly. We gotta knock these guys in real quick. Let's On this guy, just by taking a quick look, our exhaust runs right through here, right between these two bolts. So I'm just gonna run this through the bandsaw real quick and just knock these couple fins off to give us room for that big pipe and then bolt this guy down. All right, not too bad. We'll clean that up a little bit. So yeah, for this application, uh, right stuff, Ray, one minute. You know, you really just wanna make sure that you're filling in this little gap. Uh, it's got a little relief in there to let you fill in some extra gasket maker. That's like that. You know, it's gonna be a zero tolerance. It's all machine surfaces, so. And I'll just put just enough. So when you squeeze that thing down, just get that nice little factory style seam. So probably have too much down, but that's fine. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna wipe it. Looks good. We only got one minute. I like to hold it away from it, try and get a couple bolts started so you don't just slam it flange to flange and make a big mess. A couple of those. Look at that seam. I would almost venture to say that's too much. That's perfect. So now the other thing is, so this is our drive shaft shop, carbon fiber drive shaft for this adorable little car. It's the tiniest little drive shaft ever. And so it's got the R200 style four bolt flange. And since we're going to the Z diff, we have the R230 style flange, but these are all rebuildable. We're just going to pop these little clips out and then we're gonna knock the bearing down and out of the way and swap this flange onto here. This is all theory. Like I'm 
I, I think it's gonna work. We kind of just started putting pieces together and I think I have everything we need. Let's give that a little grab. Whoop. Now for this, the way you get this out is you get a little rubber mount. You ever done this neat? Good. So rubber mallet. And you push your thing to the side. Open these guys up. Fresh ones. Now we're going to put a little Permatex thread lock on here. Just to make sure this guy doesn't back out. Threads in there. So I got two nuts so I can lock it down. Nice and proper. Use a lot of orange. Get these little guys in there. Fresh crush washers for all of these guys here. You don't need any sealing on these. That's what the crush washer's for. So, curious if it's gonna clear. We'll find out. So, we swooped this thing in. I know, we didn't film it, but whatever. It literally just like fell in. You saw us struggle with it once already, but uh, we took the exhaust off and uh, you know, we got the one bolt lines up, everything clears, the housing clears, the uh, front bushings clear, the drive shaft clears, everything looks pretty good. So we're just gonna keep moving forward with this thing. Get the front mount in, get it all tightened down, and then uh, maybe we'll take it back out. So we, we got a little head start on the diff, but we took the time to get the drive shaft shop rings bolted on. So they bolt in from the inside. We put a lot of Permatex thread locker red on there so they don't back out. Sling this thing up and into the car. Uh, we have the exhaust out of the way, the front mounts out of the way. Um, everything's looking ready for something. So might as well get after it. We got her in there. She's looking good. Had to get a little spacer action going on, but that's a nice looking diff. Now we just gotta go through. We got our carbon drive shaft in. Gotta put the axles back in, tighten all those up. But the big thing was getting the angle set and getting that all lined up and the rear tight and the front's uh, gonna get tightened up right now. And then we're good. You freaking hot. You freaking hot, dude. Give me those nuts. Now that we're moving on to the axles. We got the front all in and good. Had to um, actually raise the front just a touch because that was just touching right there. So we had to put a little spacer in there, get that up and happy. Uh, what you saw me do earlier was I couldn't get this uh, axle to pop over the cup. So I actually loosened the strut uh, bolts here and I was able to clock the wheel out, which pulled the axle out and then swung it into place and punched it back in. Now it's nice and in there. Wipe off some of this grease. I'm getting fresh new hardware because this stuff back down is a little chewed up. So. Brand new hardware for the axles, and we're gonna throw some uh, Permatex Red on there because I don't want them coming out again. So we're gonna get them locked down. All righty -o. So this is that little piece we had to cut out for the exhaust. Perfect fit, and yeah, everything's looking good. Everything's spinning good, feeling good, looking good. And you know the deal. When you look good, your diff works good, and when you feel good, your Diff is dressed up well, and that's that's how the saying goes. Uh, let's lower her down and give her a spin. All right, she's feeling really good. I'm into it. It's a lot quieter. It's a lot smoother, especially when I'm turning because I don't have a big old locking diff in there now. It's just the, uh, the viscous style from the 370Z, and right like this. Now it's dead quiet. Ooh. I really like that. Yeah, it was nice having the um, big locker in there for a minute, but it, uh, it's not like I'm drifting this thing all the time, so I'd rather have this thing be smooth as ice every day and not uh, 
clunking around, banging around, loosening up all my axles. So, into it. Job done. <laughs>